this one here. So my source is 172.16.0. That's interesting. Okay, I've got it there. But do I have it? Ah, look. If you have a look here, the source address in our network address translation rules, we haven't gotten we haven't got the 172 address in there. So that's where it needs to be. So set service. It's network it's uh, NAT. We're going to set this up again as rule 20. The outbound interface is going to be exactly the same one, E3. The difference is, of course, that the source is not going to be 192.168 source address is going to be 172.16.0.0 slash 24. So you want anybody that dials in to be able to do it. I could just do a 2 here and just let that individual person but we'll do that for the moment. Next thing we want to do as we, you're probably bored of setting up that by now. Yeah, set a type as masquerade and then we're going to commit it. How about now? Hey look at that, we've got a remote worker dialing in and then being able to access the internet just like that okay now that's great but do we really want remote people being able to SSH in to our server at the moment here we haven't got any firewalling or anything so let's do that this is a, a, a public server so we want to um, make sure that it's nice and secure I guess so let's do that okay well I think set firewall and we're gonna give it a name um, what shall we call it let's call it WAN in because that's where we're going to be applying it I think uh, WAN in is enough of a description. Uh, rule 10, we're going to set the action to accept. Now what that is, is that's going to allow anything that already has an established connection. And the next thing we want to do Obviously, the remote user VPN link won't already have an established connection, so it's just going to be knocked off. So we want to accept that in. So action accept, and this is our rule to allow somebody to just be able to VPN in. And we know that the port is that, and we know that the, the, the um, protocol is UDP. How do we know that though? Why isn't it TCP? Well, because if we have a look here and we have a look at the configuration and we scroll down, you'll see ah, protocol UDP, and we can see we're collecting on that port there. So, whatever's here and here has to be reflected in here as well. Now, are we done? Let's have a look. What do we got? So we got action accept for the uh, established connections, and we've that's fine. And our rule twenty is accept anything with a destination of one one nine four and a protocol of UDP. That's great, but it's not going to do anything if it's not actually um, applied to a interface. So let's do that. Set interface. Um, in fact, I've forgotten which one is my uh, one interface. So let's double check that. E3. Okay, so set interfaces E E3 firewall. Um, we're going to set it inward, and it's got a name of WAN in. Okay, next one. Local. Okay, let's commit that, and let's check. Now let's pretend, seeing as this person's currently external, can we ping that? No, we can't ping it. Which is what we want. We didn't say that pings could be allowed through. But can we VPN in? We can. 
and we get Internet Access out. So there we go. We've set up our secure uh, VPN server. We set up OpenVPN, we set up certificates, so we can network address translation in several places for several different subnets, and we've configured the firewall to only allow connections through to OpenVPN. And also, let's check to see whether the... What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to check to see... And there we go. That's the under construction page, which is IIS's default page. So it's correctly going from going from here, VPNing in to this subnet, and then accessing the HTTP server over here. Okay, that's it from me. Um, I hope you have enjoyed um, this talk. Um, and if you have any questions, then just leave comments at the bottom, and I'll try and answer them as quick as possible.